there we go. I'm an Instagram newbie <laughs> as far as Instagram Live. So there we figured are. it out. We got through the initial glitch. So here we are. So excited. So excited to be with you today. Awesome. Uh, I'm here on behalf of Paloma, and you are here to talk to us about Thyroid Strong and exercise and ask some questions. And so let's jump into our conversation. Yeah. So, I mean, you are Paloma's go to thyroid expert. What do you hear? when women, I'm sure you get lots of questions, not only on labs, because that's what you guys specialize in, but like, what do you, I'm sure women ask questions about working out and fatigue, you know, I overdid yeah. it. What should I be doing? What, well, what questions we're always come up getting for you guys? Questions, like, I'm too tired to work out. What should I do? Or, you know, my, my sister told me I should do P90X and I, you know, I can't even walk <laughs> around the block without feeling exhausted. What am I supposed to do? And if I had to pick something, what what would be the best type of exercise for at least to get started back into working out? So those are some of the kind of questions that I often get. But it's a, it's always about people wanting to overdo it and then regretting that immensely and then feeling like, well, I, obviously I can't exercise because I end up flat on the couch for two days if I go to that P90X class or I go to the gym and go great guns. So that's really sort of what we're what we're hearing a lot of from our from our patient community in Paloma. I'm sure you've heard that like a lot of women with Hashimoto's and thyroid conditions in general have this element of exercise intolerance. Like it's this fine line. Like they don't do enough and they don't feel like they obviously did enough and then they do just a little bit more and their joints ache, their muscles ache, they're super fatigued. They feel like they're on the couch under their weighted blanket and they can't get off the couch for sometimes a couple days. And this is very real. A lot of women are like, I don't get it. My friends can go on a hour hike and I can do yeah. it 20 minutes and then I'm tanked exactly. out. Um, the other yeah. thing that I hear is, is also yeah. that people, um, uh, they have muscle and joint aches and pains, you know, because that's really common with Hashimoto's. And in, some, in many cases, if you're hypothyroid and you're not optimally treated, or you're you're just getting back into things you know you, you just what would not flatten anyone else is going to leave you achy and sore and in pain for days so uh, i think thyroid patients really need to get some guidelines on how to gently work their way into working out so that they feel energized because if you end up feeling exhausted that's not a good sign because that means you're pushing your adrenals too hard and you're really not going to end up feeling like the exercise is actually making you feel more energetic and vital rather than debilitating you more. 100%. And the most common recommendation for women with hypothyroidism and Hashimoto's is low impact exercise, yoga, Pilates, stretching, walking. And there is definitely a time and place for all of that, right? Like yoga fills the soul. Walking is good for our cardiovascular health, but I think one thing that might get overlooked with that kind of baseline recommendation is that with a thyroid issue, we have right. to maintain our muscle mass, right? It's harder to keep the muscle on the bone when we are in a hypothyroid state because, you know, every, yeah. everything needs thyroid hormone. And so I wish that walking maintained our muscle, right? Like it was enough. But I think there's a way to keep our muscle on the bone, um, to feed our muscle appropriately through some resistance training with not overdoing it, right? Like a workout in the gym where you are picking up a weight it doesn't have to be an hour. It doesn't have to be two hours. It doesn't even have to be 40 minutes. It could literally be 20, maybe 30 minutes with long rest breaks. And I'm talking like a minute up to three minutes between sets and you can start to feed your muscle. And for the women who don't know, like, why are we talking about muscle? Muscle is the largest endocrine organ in the body, right? It secretes myokines and myokines can affect our immune system, our hormone. When we contract a muscle under load, it helps with the turnover of our thyroid hormone it stabilizes our joints. So those women that are like, oh, my joints always hurt and my muscles ache. Usually the more muscle you have, the more stable your joints will be. A lot of women, like their joint pain will go away 
even if they didn't tweak their medication, all they did was start to resistance train. I've noticed women, their joint pain will go away. And so I like to frame the exercise conversation around how can we feed our muscle tissue without burning ourselves out? And it's a very fine line to walk, right? Like you just do a little too much and it's like, whoo, my adrenals are totally tanked. Um, but if you're not giving your muscle enough stimulus, then I noticed for myself, I feel kind of like malaise, tired, like, you know, we all want that, you know, so-called runner's high um, endorphin release. And part of that is like having to challenge yourself enough to get the stimulus, but not push yourself into, you know, exactly. a very fatigued I mean, state. I, you know, I... Uh, back when I was really debilitated from my thyroid condition uh, and I could not really do any sort of exercise, what I did was I just worked it in to the day. And I did things, and maybe you'd approve of this, as, as silly or simple as I had some hand weights in the kitchen. And every time I went into the kitchen to do some, you know, microwave something or put something on the stove, I'd do a few crunches with my hand weights. I kept stretchy bands next to the TV. So when I would be sitting in the TV, I'd be stretching and doing some muscle work because let's, let's not forget one of the muscles, one of the secret power, superpowers of muscles is they are way more metabolically active than fat. And so the more muscle we, the more calories we yes. burn at rest. And so you can take two women, both of them 140 pounds, the one who's got a lot more muscle is going to be able to eat a lot more and not gain weight at, or eat a healthy diet and be losing weight if that's what her goal is compared to a woman who's the same exact weight but has much more higher percentage of body fat. So muscle is also, it's, it's part of our uh, fitness regimen for uh, being fit and losing weight or maintaining our health, a healthy weight as well. 100%. I was trying to think the other day, and I'd be curious your thoughts. I can't think of a downside to having more muscle. Like, you know, we, um, like, I can't think of a downside. Like, it helps with thyroid hormone turnover. It's, we can burn more well, calories you can with it. That's like, the concern that I sometimes yeah. hear from women when I, when I, as a coach, will say to them, look, if you have any energy at all, focus on doing some work to build your muscles first, before you the aerobics. But they'll yeah. say, I don't want to look like one of those bodybuilder ladies. It's very difficult <laughs> for women to develop that look in the first place. It just tones and strengthens. But um, tell us why that's sort of a silly concern for women to think they're going to end up looking like the female version of Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, it's um, first, we don't have the, the hormones, right? Like the testosterone that we have as women is not the same as men. Men put on muscle actually easier. I'm kind of jealous. But that idea of like, we're going to get bulky, um, you know, at best, we put on half a pound, maybe a pound if we're miraculously lucky mm -hmm. of muscle mass, right? And so for the women who are worried about getting bulky, it's actually really challenging to put on muscle. And I think one of the conversations to have would be, if you're putting on muscle, but maybe the number on the scale isn't changing, maybe you're changing body composition. Like this was, this was one of the women, um, she's in thyroid strong and she's like, you know, I'm really frustrated because I haven't seen the number on the scale change. And she sees, um, she sees an obesity medicine doc and she went to him and he's, he put, I don't know if he did a DEXA or an in body scan, but he's like, you have, um, gained three pounds of muscle. Yeah like just pure muscle. And she was like, Oh, she's like, maybe that's why the, the number on the scale hasn't changed because I was, I like muscle weighs, war weighs more than fat. Our goal is to change the body composition, you know, change the ratio of muscle to fat um, versus like the number on the scale. And she was actually, she was, she went from frustration to like, Oh, I'm well, really proud of myself. <laughs> three. I always but, tell women don't yeah. focus especially when you first start doing any kind of working uh, with muscle building, don't focus on the number on the scale, focus on how you fit in those. How do you yeah. look and how does your body feel? I mean, everyone with a thyroid problem knows that feeling of walking up the stairs and feeling like your legs are lead balloons. And when you start doing, mm. Like just yeah. even basic working out in your with the muscles in your legs, all of a sudden you're walking up the stairs and you're like, 
wow, my legs feel lighter. They feel like more flexible. I just feel more energetic moving around. And, you know, and when you are not stretching those pants to try to tighten the button and, you know, zip them up and you're really like, oh, wait a minute, everything's fitting a little bit better. I'm feeling a little bit more, you know, tight in my clothes. I mean, when you actually start to look at those factors, those are the first things you start to see. Those are the benefits you want to look for. Um, I always tell people, like, don't even go on a scale. Go on once a month or, you know, whatever, just to see if you're making any progress from that standpoint. But that replacement of fat with muscle is so profound as far as your body shape and how you feel and how you look. Yeah, 100%. And I always like to frame what I do health-wise, like how I eat, how I work out, even starting to dig into, you know, environmental load factors from an energy perspective. And I know fatigue and gaining weight are like the two biggest struggles, but I believe like if you get the energy piece right, like you're not going to have to be like trying to find the most motivation to work out. You're going to have the energy to do it versus if you go at it from like, oh, I got to lose the fat. I got to lose weight. You know, I got to, that. it's like such a depriving state. It's like restricting, depriving, whereas you focus on like, oh, I'm going to feed my muscle tissue. I'm going to eat my optimal protein. I'm going to resistance train three times a week for 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes. It's this enhancing. It's not such a like a torturous right. ride <laughs> trying to like find, right. you know, find the number so of right. change or lose fat. Yeah. Yeah. So I know it's a big struggle, this weight loss aspect. So I always love talking about fatigue, but women keep emailing me like, should I do intermittent fasting? Should I be keto? Should I do this? And I do this. And I was like, why don't we just make it really simple and actionable? And we're just going to talk about if you want to lose weight with Hashimoto's, let's talk about it from a food perspective, um, from an exercise perspective, and then start to dapple in like an environmental load perspective, which I think conventional right. medicine might not address as much. Like if you have mold exposure or water damage or parasites, that can affect you know how you're holding weight. So I put together a master class. It starts Monday. Uh, it's Monday, Wednesday, Thursday. And it's just going to break each one of those down in very simple terms where you could literally take action the next morning. And one of the things I recommend is like, start your day with protein. And I have had that, like that, like nothing else, like don't increase your steps. Don't touch a kettlebell. And women are like, I have so much energy. I don't crush it too. Like I get these DMS all the time. And I'm like, you know, that one simple change is so powerful and it's yeah. easy to implement. You know, it doesn't feel um, like it weighs you down. So it's like your star Melanie mentioned, she goes, the more protein I have in my diet, the smaller yeah. my waist size gets. Absolutely. Like, I, that's I mean, amazing. I, I, yeah. My thyroid struggle, but you know, starting the day with a bowl of oatmeal or cereal was just a disaster for me because not, I'm hungry 20 minutes later, oh, yeah. my blood oh. sugar is going through the roof. And, you know, but if I eat uh, a couple of eggs uh, and, you know, a little bit of avocado and maybe a small piece of fruit, I mean, I'll feel full for hours and I'll have a lot more energy and I won't get that hour later feeling of really being logy and tired and fuzzy and brain fogged. And we know that, you know, through with the Hashimoto's patients, they're, we're often sensitive to grains, uh, which are the high carb foods, not the high protein foods. And so the more we can get to whole foods, to proteins, to good fats, to healthy fruits and vegetables, nuts, seeds, that type of thing. And away from this, you know, pasta and bread and cereal sort of a focused uh, approach that a lot of Americans are eating. Not only is that helpful for our weight loss, but on a bigger picture, it's helpful for energy, inflammation, and our autoimmune disease as well. So there's a, it's a win-win proposition to, to take that approach. Yeah. I was very much like the croissant and yep. coffee, like coffee and croissant in the morning. It was very, like very New York. And, um, and then I would, I would see patients all day and my schedule would be so busy. I'd be like, I don't need to eat lunch. I'll just skip lunch. And then I would have like a piece of salmon and broccoli at night. And I was like, why am I exhausted? Why do I feel like I need a nap at 2 p.m.? Why is my mood like this? <laughs> like, I feel like a crazy person that I'm tired, that I'm, you know? And so I think little dial movers, little changes that you can make in how you're eating, how you're working out 
and also how you're sleeping. I'd say those are like the big three. And then you can start to dive into like, Mm -hmm. is there something else going on? You know, I think people like to focus on like, should I be taking LDN or should I not? Or it's like, well, how are you sleeping? How are you eating? How are you working out? Get the, those, the foundation, right. And then start to explore. All those and of course, options. we always want to make um, sure with anyone with a thyroid problem, if they've, uh, if their thyroid isn't functioning anymore, or it's atrophied due to Hashimoto's, or there's, you know, hypothyroidism has set in over a dining basis, the baseline is also always making sure that the thyroid is treated when necessary. We've got to get that thyroid into the healthy range 100%. from the standpoint with, you know, e- e- external medications when necessary. And, you know, that's what, what Paloma is doing. But then, you know, once you've gotten yourself optimal or into, the, into a good place on the thyroid medicine, what's next? And that's where these factors that you're talking about in your masterclass come in, where we're talking about what can we do with our, our diet, our nutrition, our exercise, our environmental factors. Um, and, yeah, I mean, one of, one of the things I've always laughed about with, with patients when I've talked to them is, you know, don't tell me that you're tired as a thyroid patient and then tell me you only sleep six hours a night. You know, I mean, that's, not yeah. that's yeah. <laughs> yeah. Enough, you know, like if you're getting seven or eight hours a night and you're still tired after a while, then let's talk about that as a continuing lingering symptom. But some of these lingering symptoms that people are attributing to their thyroid are, in fact, lifestyle issues that they need to address right out of the gate before they start looking for, well, I need a drug to stay awake. No, you don't. You need to get eight hours of sleep a night. And, you know. 100%. Yeah, 100%. Um, All Morganic mentioned, she goes, I stopped working out and my daily movement is walking a lot. My hypothyroid labs are the best they have been. Is walking okay to only do? So I think there's a time where a woman should focus on, Mm -hmm. let's just say low impact exercise, right? Going back to your point, like maybe their labs aren't optimized. Maybe they're swinging hyper to hypo. Maybe they're having incredible, you know, burning the candle at both ends and having some adrenal insufficiency and maybe other stressors in life are not in check. And if if you do, do go pick up a weight, it is just another stressor, right? But ideally you would recover properly and get right. enough sleep and do that baseline stuff. I th- think of those other things, especially if your thyroid labs are not in optimal range, it's just very challenging to have the energy to do anything more. And um, maybe walking is it. But then if you feel better, which is walking, I would start to explore like what else is going on so that one day you could reintegrate some resistance training. I I personally don't think walking is enough. I think it's enough if your thyroid labs aren't optimized and you're, you know, stressed to the max and not sleeping. But if all those other factors are optimized, I don't think walking is enough to maintain your muscle tissue. It's great for cardiovascular health, but even the conventional guidelines are to do, I think it's like 150 to 160 minutes a week of where you're getting your heart rate up resistance training. So, um, yeah, here's, uh, um, Alex mentioned, she goes, um, some strength workout ideas for beginners. Yeah. I love this question. So I like to start with body weight just to kind of learn the moves to kind of, reprogram the muscle memory and i like to do functional moves like working the big muscles because you know more muscle you have more calories you burn at rest um so i like some sort of hinge a squat a lunge some sort of push and pull move um and you could start with body weight and i start so for example if you started with a plank you could start with the plank off your kitchen counter right it doesn't have to be horizontal it doesn't have to be max tension and load if you start and then you could progress it to an elevated push-up with your hands on on your kitchen counter um so i like to progress with what a woman has i like to start with body weight and then start to integrate weight whether it's a kettlebell or a dumbbell um but i think it's important to just always meet someone where they're at so you could do some squats 
And if you have knees that are achy, you could squat to a chair and stand up. It doesn't have to be like, you know, butt to heels. It can just be tapping your butt to a chair and then standing back up and building tension in the body by squeezing the butt and squeezing the heels. Um, so that's typically where I start is like the functional moves with some modifications, get the form dialed in right, get the breathing dialed in right, get the core bracing properly, and then start well, to add weight. Yeah. And then it yeah. doesn't feel so scary because weights are scary, Making right? Me feel good yeah. Because, you know, I, I'm oftentimes when I'm in the kitchen, I'm totally like, I, you know, I've got kids, I've got family members, I'm, I'm always in and out of the kitchen. So that's kind of my place where I say, all right, that's where I have to sort of do my little fit in the fitness things as well as whatever else I'm doing during the day. And so I'm often in the kitchen doing planks and push ups against the counter. I mean, if I'm standing, if I'm I put a cup of tea on it. and the, or making something in the Keurig and I'm waiting for a coffee or something. I'll spend the two minutes doing push-ups against the counter. And I always thought, well, it's sort of lame, but maybe it helps a little But What you're, what I'm hearing you say is it actually is a decent thing to incorporate into my day. Totally. 100%. And I think, you know, going back to this, this idea is like, is walking enough. It depends on your goal. If your goal is eventually to have more energy eventually to start to change your body composition, which, you know, just be like, I want to lose weight. I personally think that like resistance training is a non-negotiable. Um, Cause if you only walk, it's going to take way longer to boost your energy and to lose weight. It is faster. If you're putting on more muscle, going back to your point of it's like burning more calories at rest. So I love that you do countertop push-ups in the kitchen yeah, while you're putting yeah. on your and, tea and, that's and the best stretchy bands you know with the, i do i do various resistance exercise with the stretchy bands i'll do some leg lifts and some uh stretching the arms out and the, i mean because it's just they're easy they're simple they're 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 sitting right there and they're a wonderful way to you know and i i ended up counting it up one day and i said well actually i end up with maybe 20 or 30 minutes a day of these things and i mean Hmm. Tell me if I'm wrong, because you're the expert on this. If even if it's 20 or 30 minutes broken up into three minute segments, it's still good, right? I mean, it, I don't have to do it all in a 30 minute session for to get the benefits all, all of the workout, correct? I talk about this all the time because sometimes even 20 minutes of resistance training is a lot, depending on you know if you have a um, if you're someone who's like only gets 2,000 steps a day and doesn't move a lot, right. 20 minutes is a lot. So. I'll have someone break it up mm -hmm. into two 10 minute chunks. The muscle happens when we hit this perceived exertion of fatigue of, if it was on a scale zero to 10, 10, like let's say you're doing your bicep curls, 10 is like, I can't lift it. Right. And zero is, you know, I could do a hundred more of these. You want to hit this like feeling by the last couple reps mm -hmm. of like a seven out of 10, maybe, maybe eight. That's where the muscle growth happens. Another way to think about it is you're doing your, your bicep curls in the kitchen, right? And you're like, maybe I have two more in the tank. If you're like, oh, I could do 10 more. Like you want to hit by the last couple reps, that feeling yeah. of like, oh, I only have two more. So whether you get to that feeling for 10 minutes broken up over two day, you know, two parts of your day for a total of 20, or you do it all in 20 minutes, it doesn't matter. It's the feeling that you're trying to hit fatigue. Fatigue is always like a little different for the Hashi ladies because <laughs> we're like on the couch fatigued, but that perceived, okay. called perceived exertion, um, Sarah, she goes, I stopped resistance training and I gained 10 pounds. So I agree it's a non-negotiable, which is, you know, hard way. She knows. <laughs> um, the hard way. Yes. But um, yeah, I think I, I, I put out an Instagram post that, I mean, really, I feel like every person on the planet should be doing some resistance training, but especially for the Hashi ladies, because it's so much harder Going back to that point of being hypothyroid to maintain our muscle tissue, we just, we just atrophy faster and easier. So it's almost like if we just kind of did what someone else's norm is, we might have yeah. to do a little more over time. Um, 
ideally we would also get our thyroid labs optimized that's like yeah that's a non-negotiable I, I, as well in my mind that's the foundation so, of yeah. the house and the nutrition the exercise they're all the walls totally and roof but if the foundation isn't there then none of those other things are really going to have the kind of impact that we want them to on our wellness our daily quality of life yeah totally i love that analogy that's so good i love it yeah so did you have any other questions for me because i know that uh um you had you had there were a few things that you wanted to maybe touch on have we covered everything that you wanted to cover or uh should we yeah yeah i think for the woman who's like frustrated with her exercise routine whether it's there or not you know we all fall off the bandwagon but you know if your workout is making you exhausted mm -hmm. there's a better way and if you're scared of working out like if you're scared of picking up a weight um there are you know being a chiropractor who sees patients in person and everyone if there was one cue to get everyone into the same good form it would have been trademarked but everyone responds differently to different cueing right so um i think that's one of the beauties of like seeing people in person looking at hashimoto's women from a movement mm -hmm. and strength perspective um versus you know like sitting and talking about labs that's that's amazing that's an essential piece but you know, very few people look at someone from like, okay, how are they moving? How are they loading their joints? Um, how are they, can they pick up a weight? How do they move their body when they do that? It's different. And so um, one of the things that's really great about Thyroid Strong is that the cueing is very specific. It's like, this is how you step your feet. This is where you point your toes. This is where the knees go. This is how you sit your hips back. Um, before you even pick up a weight. And it just takes away the like, I don't know how to do it, I'm scared. And it empowers women to be like, oh, I know exactly how to step up to a kettlebell and do a deadlift. Like I know exactly where to put my feet. So um, that is, you know, one of my favorite things to do um, for the Hashi ladies. But yeah, I mean, I think even like before talking about thyroid strong is that I have a master class. it's free. I have women sign up and email me. They're like, are you sure this is free? I'm like, it's free. It's like, this is free. Um, Cause it's a big topic. Uh, so right now there's about 400 women signed up and it's, we're just gonna, I'm gonna do a three part masterclass on how to lose weight as a woman living with Hashimoto's. And the first one, we're gonna talk about the food aspect and how we're feeding our bodies. We'll talk about protein and how to digest it. And um you know, there's been some questions about intermittent fasting, which mm -hmm. is a different angle for the autoimmune population than, you know, the normal population. The second one is on next Wednesday, and we'll talk about how to work out and how to feed your muscle tissue to lose weight. And then the third one is starting to just like, just plant the seed. Like, is there environmental triggers that you never would have thought, like, is there a crack down the side next to your window that you always thought was normal, but maybe is starting to, maybe the wall's holding some water and mold growing behind the wall, you know? So just things because, you know, a lot of women drive three hours just to see their endocrinologist. And I think it's important to empower women to Absolutely. ask the right questions. Like once you do have that time with your doctor, like know what questions to ask oh, yeah. the information you need and if they don't do the testing go to paloma well absolutely you can do it I mean, paloma, paloma makes it very easy if you want to get your thyroid check you can ab kit do, do it so home. easy it's, painless. it's confidential it's very accurate you can get your thought all your thyroid labs done and i did want to mention too for people who are on who are already paloma members you might have seen dr emily because she's got a few workouts in our paloma app <laughs> And um, for, for those of you who aren't, aren't familiar true. with the Paloma app, I'd suggest you download it. It's also free, uh, like Dr. Emily's uh, masterclass, and you'll find uh, really good 
advice on some nutritional guidelines. You'll see Dr. Emily's workouts and some other uh, guidance on movement and some lifestyle in information, meditation, some yoga. So it's a really great additional resource because as we know as Hashimoto's patients, uh, we need to really put together sort of a tribe of all of our experts. We need the doctors uh, and the lab work like Paloma. We need the lifestyle advice. We need to know how to move, which Dr. Emily is going to tell us what to do. So I think the more we can find the experts that really resonate with us, the closer we can get to feeling and living well on a daily basis and really having that vitality and energy that so many people with hypothyroidism feel is lacking in their life. Totally, 100%. And some of the things that I'm going to share and some of the things that you guys also share were things that I did from a lifestyle perspective. And I think after, it was probably like a year, put my Hashimoto's into remission. And like even through a second pregnancy, haven't had a flare since. Um, and I really attribute it to like a lot of the information that you guys share of like eating, getting your lab work checked regularly so that, you know, anytime I'm like fatigued and I'm doing all the things, I'm like, okay, I'm going to get my labs checked. Just make sure everything is good. Um, not saying that remission is the goal. Right. The goal is to feel like your best self. But when you start to make little changes in your day to day from a lifestyle perspective from sleeping eating exercising you can feel big Absolutely. shifts in your Hashi and symptoms. even if you don't achieve remission which not every patient can achieve drops in your antibody yeah. levels are uh, tr translate to noticeable improvements in your symptoms and your energy uh we did a study with Paloma patients 100%. and their, their antibody levels dropped mm. significantly while they were uh, working with Paloma using our app, following an autoimmune protocol, anti-inflammatory diet. And some of them actually did get into the reference range for an, uh, antibodies, which we, which is technically the definition of remission. But a lot of them said, oh my gosh, I feel the best I have in years. And even if their antibodies in the, in the range quite Amazing. yet, that is really that's the that's the payoff is it's not again we're not lab values we're we're human beings and that is really how we feel is the most important factor of all 100 percent, i totally agree well i'm excited yeah. that we have this opportunity awesome. to let our uh, paloma community uh know about your you. upcoming program and where can people find out a little bit more about how to sign up for the uh master class or thyroid strong other programs that you have, and where can they find you um, on the web apart from Instagram? Go to your Instagram uh, page and look for the, the links and things, but just tell us anyway. Yeah, yeah. So Dr. Emily Kybird, which is my name, um, forward slash dremilykybird.com forward slash weight loss. Super easy link. Um, that's the free masterclass for Meets Table. dremilykybird.com forward slash masterclass. Sorry forward slash weight loss. It's right. in my um, Instagram under links. I just have one link. So that's a master class. And you can go to my website if you're interested in Thyroid Strong uh, as a program. And I am Dr. Emily Kybert across all platforms, including TikTok. Right. <laughs> Super. Well, I'll have so, to follow you on TikTok yeah. and see yeah. what you're doing. I'm, I'm assuming there's some good ex little exercise demos and some information on your TikTok and you're a brave. <laughs> yeah, uh, there are. Yeah, it's but it's fun. It's fun. <laughs> all those all the social media are amazing, and uh, it's a great way for us to be able to connect with uh, with the communities. And I hope that all of the thyroid patients, uh, Hashimoto's patients out there that are watching, feel don't feel as alone because there's lots of people there. Dr. Emily, there's Paloma's a whole network of incredible providers. There are so many of us out yeah. there doing everything we can to help fast forward you up the learning curve and make your lives better and healthier. So, you know, we're not alone. You're not alone. And we love the community aspect of all of these efforts that we do. Yeah. How amazing that we have the Avenue like Paloma and an iPhone to have these conversations to spread information versus like, you know, I have women, uh, emailing me. They're like, I was diagnosed 40 years ago. Like none of this information was out there, you know? And it's, 
it's such a blessing that if you do have an autoimmune condition, you're learn, you know, you have the information in this format. You can literally go to an app, check out workouts, do your blood work at home. Yeah. It's, you know, it's, I mean, it's I, like I started out as a patient advocate yeah. for thyroid patients in the mid 1990s, uh, back in the days of AOL websites and, uh, you know, chat rooms and the, yeah. yeah. Exactly, and dial up resources uh, that we have now compared to then is phenomenal. I mean, it's light years ahead, and but it you know it was the internet that really brought people together and empowered women with information because in the you know before then it was you got a thyroid problem, take some medicine, come back in a year, and if you're gaining weight, tired, depressed, fatigued, brain fog, menopausal, PMSing, so be it. That's the that's you know your lot in life. Now we have every possible resource and information at our fingertips, and um, I'm so excited that people are going to be made aware of your amazing program, Emily. And uh, hope you're going to have lots more people signing up to join you okay. and learn how to be thyroid strong and how to lose weight with Hashimoto's and hypothyroidism. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm excited. Right. I'm excited to well, present. Well, uh, so. And let yeah. everybody get back to awesome. their Friday afternoon fun here. And um, I am thrilled again. Thank you so much for connecting. And it was really fun to be able to chat with you and hear about your program. And people look in the on uh, Dr. Emily's Instagram or our Paloma Instagram. We'll have a little more details and links and things for people to look for more information about the things that we talked about today. Um, but it's pleasure to talk with you and I hope we can yeah. do it again. Yeah, for sure. Mary, thank you so much. And if anyone is like, wants to dapple in the workouts, the workouts are on your app. So go to Paloma's app, download it, check them out. Yeah. If you want to start to get, get like a, what is uh -huh. the juice of Super a thyroid strong sensible. workout? Thank you so very yeah. much. And you have a great day and a great weekend and everyone watching. Thanks so much for joining us and stay well and have a fantastic uh, weekend. Take awesome. care. Thank, Thank you. Thank bye you. Bye.